I really want to talk about the phenomenon that we're seeing in the Irish economy and in manufacturing at the moment. And I'm, I'm going to start and finish with the same sentence. Right now in Ireland, we are investing twice the European average in equipment and machinery. Right, that's the scale of what's happening. So you probably didn't need an economist to tell you that the sector is very, very vibrant at the moment. You can see it all around us. But that is the scale of what's happening. Investment by Irish companies in equipment and machinery is double the European average. And that's per all workers, not per workers in manufacturing. So manufacturing is incredibly important to our economy and we are going through a very major renaissance and what looks like a golden era for Irish manufacturing. Um, I got some slides I'm going to talk to. One of the things I really want to demonstrate is that we have gone through this very, very significant evolution in manufacturing and in the economy. We have not been standing still. Our economy is performing incredibly strongly and manufacturing has been at the center of that. And I'm going to demonstrate that with some of the graphics and the charts over the next 15 minutes or so. Um, I think one of the most amazing things about Ireland and when we look at the debates that are happening around the world around people's attitudes to internationalization and globalization is how successful internationalization has been for our economy. When you think of not long before some of us were born and probably around the time some of us were born and before many of you were born in the 1950s and 60s, um, this was an incredibly impoverished economy. Uh, right up to the 1970s and 80s, in many ways, we were still the sick man of Europe. Now, Ireland is one of the wealthiest countries, not just in Europe, but in the world. And the main reason for that is because we have embraced internationalization and globalization. And that hasn't just been about multinationals coming here with foreign direct investment. That's an incredibly important part of our economy. What has been equally important has been the degree to which Irish companies have internationalized. And I think one of the things that is very significant is when we look at the performance of that economy, the evolution of the Irish economy over recent years, manufacturing has really been at the center of that and has been at the core of it. And when you compare, again, our economic success to other countries in Europe and how we have been so much to the forefront in embracing international opportunities, inbound and outbound, it really does explain why this economy is now so successful and so wealthy today. One of the reasons beyond, be, behind the most recent renaissance in the Irish economy and in Irish manufacturing has been a very significant reform that we've seen in multinational companies and international tax structures. Um, because of this, Ireland has been at the butt of some jokes from international economists. There's an economist, Krugman, who called this leprechaun economics. And the reason he said that was because in a single year in 2015, the Irish economy grew by 30%. One third. Most people looking at that saying, it's an aberration in the numbers. There's something funny going on in Ireland. Most economists actually chose to disbelieve it. What they missed was that the Irish economy is actually unique. We are an economy that in many ways has now found a resource, like oil. Except in our case, that oil find has been intellectual property. So in 2015, the economy did grow by one third, 30%. The reason that happened was because we got an avalanche of investment into the economy predominantly in the form of, of intellectual property. What's really important from the manufacturing sector perspective and from the future of manufacturing is that that investment intellectual property could not have happened if we didn't have the substance of a manufacturing sector already in place through policies that we built up over decades. So that 30% economic growth was real. And if you want to see where is that around us, we can see it in the investment that's happening in manufacturing right now, but we can also see it in the revenue 
that government is getting from business. When that phenomenon happened of 30% GDP growth, government was getting just over 4 billion in corporate tax. It's now getting over 10 billion. 10 billion. So one in five of all of our tax euros is now coming from the business sector in terms of the corporate tax that they're paying to the state. So like finding the aisle, we're now getting a gush of revenue that's coming from a new wave of investment in the Irish economy that's been underpinned by the substance of our manufacturing sector. So in response to those observations that we were seeing from a broad business perspective in terms of questioning the model of the Irish economy, we've been communicating internationally about this model of substance that we have here. And it's very much, I suppose, a demonstration of the depth, the diversity, and the evolution that has been happening in Irish industry and Irish manufacturing. And when we talk about this economy of a model of substance, and I'm going to talk about it in the context of the manufacturing sector, we think that there's six characteristics that demonstrate that. So the first is the evolution. So when you look at what's happening around this hall today, and when you look at what, what's happening in Irish manufacturing, it is completely different from the origins of our globalization in the 1950s and the 1960s. We have never stood still. And because of this global reform of international tax, we're now in the most exciting wave of investment into the Irish economy. So this model continues to evolve in terms of sophistication. When you think of some of the basis of our manufacturing in the 1960s, it was probably very much assembly based. And when you look at the level of innovation and research and development that now is operating side by side in manufacturing plants, the nature of the industry has changed completely. And we have achieved that phrase of going up the value chain. So the characteristics are completely different from 2030 and even 10 years ago. Our global footprint is incredibly important because we spoke about the inbound and, and I'll come back to that. But increasingly what we're seeing is that Ireland is at the center of so many significant supply procurement chains. We're actually at the center of so many global business processes. So whether that's the movement of goods in terms of a manufacturing supply chain, whether it's the movement of data across the world, so much of what's happening in the global economy is happening through Ireland and Irish companies are involved in it. So increasingly now we see, for example, our own outbound manufacturing companies, our Irish Irish food companies are supplying one-fifth of all the infant formula manufactured in the entire world. Irish companies in the US now are almost employing as many people as US companies in Ireland. So this has very much become a two-way story of manufacturing companies coming in and Irish-owned manufacturing global, globalizing and spreading their operations right across the world. And this is a phenomenon that has continued to gain pace over the last 10 years or so. One of the very significant things that I think is embedding manufacturing into Ireland is that we are embracing the full business life cycle. And when I spoke about this reform of, of taxation, having the substance and having your decision makers in Ireland is now going to be a requirement for, co for corporate tax strategy going forward. So increasingly, we are now seeing the VPs, the vice presidents of research and development sitting in Irish operations. We are seeing more and more Irish manufacturing companies delivering very, very ambitious research and development and innovation programs, not again, not just in an Irish context, but in the context of their global value and supply chains. Irish operations are at the center of the cutting edge research and innovation that's happening in the world in their sectors. So whether that's medical technology, biopharma or food, some of the best research in the world in industry is now happening here. And that's incredibly important. But we also have the finance functions and marketing functions all sitting around that core basis of attraction, which is the manufacturing plant. This is a world-class sector. So just give you a couple of examples. 
Irish companies have achieved more Shingo accreditation awards per capita than any other industry sector in the world. So this really is the highest order accreditation for quality in industry, particularly in life sciences, in international industry. And Irish companies are the star performers. These are the Nobel Prizes for quality in industry. Irish companies per capita have won more of those than any other industry in the world. So again, the quality and the excellence that's happening here is really a phenomenon. And again, when we talk to businesses across a whole range of our trade associations in IBEC, again, whether it's in make technology or biopharma or food in particular, many of those will say that they originally probably came to Ireland because it was a competitive cost location. The reason they stay here predominantly is the excellence in what we're doing. So if you're in MedTech or Biopharma, having that error count as low as you need to have it and to have some of the lowest error counts within your group across the world is incredibly important in terms of making sure that our reputation as a manufacturing location is protected and enhanced. And we continue to see that excellent surge in Irish manufacturing. We are that global hub as well though. So when you look at the brand names in global manufacturing that are now in Ireland, and again, just to take, take, three, take three sectors, um, we take technology for example. All of the top 10 technology companies in the world have operations in Ireland. 18 of the top 25 medtech companies have operations in Ireland. 18 of the top 20 biopharma companies have operations in Ireland. The world's best industry is now here. And it's almost a question, if you're not here, why not? And there are the conversations that happen in international and global boardrooms. So increasingly, we're seeing more and more of those numbers going up. We're going to have all of the top world's industry, a lot of them in manufacturing, with operations in Ireland. And I think one of the things that's very significant within that, and an opportunity that we see for manufacturing, is convergence and, and companies working across sectors. And again, you, you see it in evidence here today, in terms of food talking to biopharma, talking to, to other manufacturing, talking to engineering sectors, looking at what they're doing. And one of the real opportunities we have is that we're actually an incredibly small country. We're good at networking. It's easy to get around. And our clusters are not just clusters within medtech or the biopharma. They're actually clusters that are working cross-sectorally. And again, just to give you an example, in the US, for example, if you look at technology and, uh, and biopharma, our proximity as technology and biopharma sectors is 1 20th of the distance that you would find in the US. Yes, they have clusters, but technology is a long way from where life science happens. Here, they're actually side by side. And that breeds a really, really dynamic ecosystem in terms of how companies are interacting with each other and learning from each other. And this is really a key element in driving and supporting this very sophisticated model of substance that we see in industry and manufacturing. The evolution, I think, has been really significant in terms of employment, and, and any of you who were here from, from Martin Channel from the IDA earlier would have heard about the significance of, uh, of the foreign direct investment sector and the scale of, of jobs growth that we've seen. I think what's also interesting is the degree to which new sectors have been emerging in terms of manufacturing output particularly in terms of uh, medical technology, the strength of the medtech sector, the strength of our biopharma sector. Um, one of the things, again, that is very significant, I think, from a broader economic perspective, is the degree to which manufacturing is supporting regional development. Because we do have a challenge in that almost half of all of the economic activity in the state is happening inside that M50, right? So the country is far too reliant on the Dublin economy. What manufacturing is doing, and what this renaissance in manufacturing is doing, it's helping to drive more of that economic activity into the regions. And again, I've just put up the example of the, the medtech sector, because it is an incredibly strong cluster along the Atlantic corridor, particularly from right from Donegal down through Galway, Limerick, and Cork in particular. And you can very much see that in the chart, um, that the west of Ireland is actually at the center of a lot of this manufacturing resurgence that we're seeing at the moment. And people often say that, you know, regional towns are dying. The reality is that the main streets look pretty bad and a lot of the real t retail shops can be struggling. But very often, 
we actually don't know what's happening in the plant one mile outside the town. And what is happening in those plants right now is that they are investing incredibly ambitious for the future in a way that we've never seen in terms of scale in Irish industry and manufacturing before. Um, I'm probably heading towards finish up. I'm just going to leave you with a few final kind of observations and comments. Um, I think that point in terms of the internationalization of our manufacturing and industry is incredibly important. So this is not just an inbound multinational story. Irish SMEs are taking their operations of excellence with their research and development, their sophistication in terms of the quality of manufacturing. They're taking that internationally. And when you just look at the scale of employment that Irish business now provides in the US, I think is the strongest evidence of that. When you look at some of these numbers for a small island, it is a phenomenon, right? One third of all the world's contact lenses are manufactured in Ireland, right? We're not even five million people. That is spectacular. 80% of all the stents in the world coming out of Ireland, three quarters of all the replacement knees. And that, that's just the examples from MedTech. We're seeing it in other sectors of the manufacturing sector as well. We are small, but we are incredibly impactful in an international context. Um, I think the big question for us is where does manufacturing, where does our ecosystem for manufacturing go from here? And I think the challenge we have is that as a country, we are losing our competitiveness. So we have seen this phenomenon in the economy in terms of the investment that's coming in. And again, I'll repeat what I said at the start. Irish companies per worker right now are investing double the European average in equipment and machinery. So this, this is a phenomenon. But because there's so much activity, international activity coming into the Irish economy, we are rapidly losing our competitiveness. We are becoming a very expensive country in which to do business. We are struggling in terms of the resource and the capacity constraints around labor and other factors of, of, of business inputs. And I think the single biggest challenge we have is that how do we make this globalization model work for us and still be competitive? And the key to competitiveness is not always cost. Cost is going to be an element of it. But more significantly for this economy going forward, it's going to be your innovation performance. Because you know what? We're not going to be able to control all the cost factors out there. We are a globalized economy. We're not going to be able to control those wage rates. We're not going to be able to control the cost of housing in the way that we need to. What we can control as an industry is our innovation performance. And if you look at the macro risks for the economy now, Brexit is important. We'll come back to that uh, late, later in the session. The single biggest risk is we have jumped corporate tax revenue from 4 billion to 10 billion. To date, we are putting most of that money into the day-to-day -day running of the country. I actually think we're going to end up getting more corporate tax revenue over the coming years. But in the medium term, some of that may evaporate. US tax reform, EU tax reform, who knows what's going to happen? So we can't put that into the day-to-day -day cost of running the country. What we need to do with it is put more of it into our infrastructure so that we bring down the cost of business, fund our education system properly so you're getting the quality of graduates that we need to drive this excellence in manufacturing. And crucially, from a manufacturing productivity and competitiveness perspective, invest in innovation. As a country, we are way behind where we need to be in terms of investing in research and development and innovation. We now have lots and lots of revenue coming into the state. We need to invest that wisely and we can continue to have a competitive ecosystem for our manufacturing sector. If we don't, we're going to catch a thing called Dutch disease, right? The Dutch found oil made the whole country too expensive to be competitive and their export sector collapsed. Our oil is this intellectual property and all of the investment that's coming with it. It's giving us lots of choice, lots of opportunity, lots of money. But if we don't spend the money wisely, we're just going to become too expensive and we're actually going to smother the origin of so much of this success, which was a prosperous, dynamic manufacturing sector. So it's a really exciting time for manufacturing, but we got some big challenges, but opportunities if we make the right decision. And in particularly for indigenous manufacturing, it's about innovation because you won't be able to control the cost base in the, need to, in the way which we need to do. It's an exciting time, but it's also a perilous time if we don't make those right choices. Thanks, John.